So good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, as we uh, sit here today, towards the end of February, it's literally 12 months back uh, that the news of the pandemic had started spreading out. And um, no one would have imagined at that point of time that one year later, uh, we would still be where we are. In many ways, we have been fortunate in terms of where we have been able to uh, reach in terms of the impact, both from a medical perspective, as well as from an economic perspective. There were times during these 12 months where there was an apprehension that the kind of impact that we would see on both fronts would be catastrophic. However, um, as I sit here today, it's actually with a feeling of confidence. It is with a feeling that there is going to be a resurgence of retail in India, but it's going to be different. Over the last few weeks, as we've written this report, there are a few findings that I wanted to share with the group. The first uh, is if you look at it uh, from a long-term perspective, uh, the good news is that the consumption is back on growth trajectory and it has been supported by an uptick in economy, increased confidence and uh, improvement in robust fundamentals as time has passed by. Uh, the way I like to think about it is there is a virtuous circle of consumption, credit, and confidence, all three of which go hand in hand, uh, which is critical for success in the retail industry. And these are on the path to recovery. Just in terms of numbers, if you look at it, over the last decade, uh, retail had been growing in double digits. Uh, in 2019, the Indian retail market was close to 48 trillion rupees. For the first time in many, many years, in 2020, we actually saw a decline. Uh, so we saw a decline for the first time, not only in a decade, but multiple decades which are there. Uh, but the good news is that we are already back uh, and showing resurgence. Uh, we have done extensive research over the course of the last 12 months to see what's happening across categories, what's happening across uh, different segments of the market. And pre-COVID, our estimate was that the overall consumption is likely to reach 360 to 370 trillion rupees by 2030, uh, and GDP at about 580 to 590 trillion, and Indian consumption as a percentage of GDP at about 62%. We expect that what's going to happen because of COVID is we are going to see about a one and a half year delay in reaching this. So what we would have earlier reached by 2030 is now going to uh, be by 2031-32. And the size of the retail market is expected to be 130 to 140 trillion in the same time period. However, if you look at this, uh, the picture is very different across different segments, different categories, and that's really driven by shifts in consumer preference and confidence. Each of us will have a story of how our individual behaviors have changed over the last 12 months. As retailers, depending on whether you were an essentials retailer or a non-essentials or discretionary retailer, your view on the market would be very different. Uh, depending on whether you were in a large city or small city, your perspective would be very different. Depending on whether you were value focused, or more luxury focused, your answer would be very different. We did a, uh, you know, estimate across different categories. And what you see on the left-hand side of this page is if you look at the last decade, you find that there were some categories which actually gained, uh, you know, greater growth. But everything, everything was really in the 8 to 10% growth range. So the question is, uh, you know, what's going to happen going forward. And going forward, we see a few of the categories actually growing faster. But more importantly, uh, what is likely to happen is if you look at the right-hand side of this page, you know, there are new categories which actually have emerged in the last two decades. They have become a billion, five billion, 10 billion, even 20 billion categories in just the last two decades. And we're going to see some of that. In the report, which you will have a copy of fairly soon, you find that there are four categories that we did a deep dive on. Uh, those were uh, 
you know, staple, mobile, apparel, and food ordering. And we find different themes across these four, but there are four themes which have emerged across categories, which is stronger brands have done better, brand consciousness has increased, uh, and stronger brands have gained share. The second is online has really gained disproportionately, uh, both as a sales channel, as well as a source of influence. Uh, there has been obviously pressure on incomes and therefore value seeking behavior has increased. And instead of impulse based shopping, need based shopping has also increased. If you look at the four different categories that I talked about, you see a difference across the same staples. There is a shift towards package quality staples. Earlier, everybody would want to feel the dal and the rice, but obviously that has changed. Health has been a big gainer. Uh, mo mobile is an interesting one where uh, you actually see growth at two ends of the spectrum. Uh, one driven by price, the second by brand. Uh, in apparel, you know, one has seen a massive shift uh, towards casualization of wardrobes at leisure, which has been a global phenomena, uh, has actually entered India in a big manner. And while e-commerce has gained disproportionately, brick and mortar still has a role to play uh, as we see, especially after the opening of the lockdown. And food ordering obviously has increased significantly. Aggregators are gaining uh, compared to in the past. Uh, all this really translates to a set of clear action agenda for retailers. Now, obviously there's not a one size fits all. And rather than prescribing answers or question, uh, uh, answers for retailers, I think the intent of the report is to highlight a few key questions that many of the retailers are already acting on, depending on whether you are uh, more discretionary, whether you're more of a brand play. Uh, and the four questions that you see on the left-hand side of this page uh, are the ones which people are starting to think about what is the target segment? What is the brand promise? How do we think about the ranges, assortment, design, and quality? Is there a shift towards simplicity? Or do you actually make a shift the other way around? Uh, pricing has come up for huge uh, introspection, but so has service. So the two go hand in hand. And while omni-channel offerings or e-commerce is important, but the importance of experience cannot be underlined even in today's time. So once people have established uh, which of the left-hand side of this page that they are in, uh, there are multiple positioning options. I think some of them at the bottom of the page, what you see value retail and convenient retail uh, were things which had been prevalent in India for many years and they will continue to grow. But I think the middle part of the right-hand pa panel, which is experience-led retail, personalized retail, and omni-channel is gaining more and more importance. While there are some plays, albeit at very early stages, in terms of really playing on the theme of sustainability, conscious retailing, and completely different models of retail in terms of non-traditional offering to come into play. So these are the set of things, uh, questions, options, which are there. And as I mentioned before, it is not a one size fits all. Uh, depending on whether you are an essentials player, a value-based player, uh, a brand-led player, or a luxury player, the answers are different. But this report lays out uh, both what the options are there as well as some choices that you need, need to make as you think about the next decade. In summary, I would say uh, it's not only about the choice in terms of the positioning, but also in terms of the business model which is critical and which needs to be addressed. Um, I will not go through the same in detail. Let it suffice to say that there's plenty of food for thought uh, and the answers are different depending on where you stand. Uh, again, as we stand at the end of this 12 months, I think a special call out to all the frontline staff amongst all the retailers who over the course of the last 12 months have really put uh, themselves in the front line uh, and have done a magnificent job in terms of serving the needs and requirements of the customers in these very trying times. 
this report is really a tribute to them uh, for what they have achieved over the course of the last 12 months. And we wish them all the success and best wishes going forward.